G. Edward Griffin, author of The Creature from Jekyll Island. Thanks for being here with us. Well, thanks for inviting me, Alex. I, I really appreciate that uh, very kind introduction, but it scares the heck out of me because I think people expect, <laughs> expect too much. Uh, no brag, just fact. That's what John Wayne said. And people need to know the testament of the great work you've done in 40-plus years. In fact, briefly, how long have you been fighting the globalist? How would you wake up to him? And then let's get into eugenics. Well, the actual year of my uh, beginning of awakening was 1959. And uh, that's when I began to read some things that were, uh, you know, upstream, that not the same stuff that I was uh, seeing on the, on the media. Uh, and by 1960, I was in, in full swing. So I've been in this thing since 1960. Amazing. So we're talking about almost 50 years. Yeah, really. Time flies. You know, I hope I look as good as you when I'm your age. You're, <laughs> you're a... Uh, what a gentleman you are. No, 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 you're I'm a handsome devil. I'm going to send you a pair of glasses in the morning. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and we're going to fire out your website coming out in a few minutes, so folks, you get ready for that. You have Freedom Force International taking action against these globalists. But eugenics, I mean, in my research, everything leads to that. Our entire society is built for a social engineering grid. Break that down from your 60 years of research and what their end game is in light of this government textbook, internal textbook, it's now come out, written by Bush's advisor and Obama's advisor, calling for a planetary government to kill us. Well, I had two thoughts uh, as you were introducing the topic. Uh, and one of the thoughts is that uh, even though I was not aware of this very latest uh, development which you announced, uh, it does not surprise me in the least uh, because it's just more of the same. So the first thought has to do with if you understand what the ideology is of these people who have been running our government for many years, uh, it's called collectivism. And if you understand what that entails, then you know right away what these people are going to do because that's based upon their ideology. The ideology is that they must have total control over the entire population uh, to manipulate it in any way they see fit always in the name of for the greater good of the greater number, always supposedly for your own good, but with absolute dominance at the top. And so once you understand that's their mindset and that they think that that's, that that's a very good thing, well, then you can predict uh, what's going to happen. They're going to want to control uh, not only your health, but your reproductive uh, rights. Uh, they'll control who will survive and who will be exterminated. They'll control what you do for a living, where you live, how much you eat, what you think, you know, all of these things, because you become a, a, a cog in a giant machine. So the first thought that crossed my mind was that, it, okay, well, here, here comes eugenics again. That's always happened in every collectivist regime on this planet, whether it be communism or fascism and Nazism uh, or some of these other isms in, in Asia and Africa right now. Uh, that's part of, uh, of part of the animal. That's what it does. The other thought, is, you mentioned it, is that this is not a, a partisan issue at all. Uh, you'll find this mentality in both the Republican and the Democrat parties because both parties are dominated by collectivists. So one of the things we have to do is strip out that, that concept that Republicans and uh, Democrats oppose each other on anything significant. So those are the thoughts that cross my mind. And, you know, once people get the picture of this and they understand that collectivism is the great destroyer of their freedom, then uh, they won't fall for this nonsense about, well, is, are they Republicans or are they Democrats doing this? I want you to elaborate on this because... You have these big monopoly capitalists who, who always advertise their free market, but really what they want is big governments, big systems to shut down their competition, competition to bring in control. And then because they are collectivists, they collect our wealth and give it to themselves and then use the little bit they give back to us to domesticate us. Then why should they even want us here in their collectivist model of everything shared? Well, they want to get rid of people so there's more for the few that are left. This is their whole social engineering goal. Well, there is a certain element of, of that in their thinking. They do want to limit the population because they're afraid that if the population gets too large, it's, it becomes unmanageable. Their, their primary concern is how to manage the population. It's like a herd of cattle. If the, if the herd gets too big, you know, you have trouble managing it. It could break out of the boundaries out in the North 40 someplace. And so, so, so there's a certain element to keep the, the size of the herd down. But the other element is that they need, they need workers. They want people out there producing and serving so that they can uh, create all of the fine things of life which the elite will enjoy. 
They want a working class, and they want a servitude class. And they want our women. So, I mean, they don't want to kill all of us, just just 80%. Uh, well, I don't know what the number is, but I, whatever it is, they have no qualms about it. That's for sure. Well, you know, the United Nations Biological Diversity Assessment 96 says a world population reduction of 80%. 80 is the number you get from Ted Turner and yeah. people. But, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, some say even more, some say less. Yeah. Whatever it is, if they wanted to reduce it 5%, the principle is the same. Yeah, which is total dictatorial power. Yeah, over who lives and who dies, just because of the numbers. How would you say their program's going right now, watching it closely for 60 years? Uh, I mean, to me, watching it for 15 or so, it looks like they've got the power, they're steering things, but they don't have total control, and, and as they build their new world order, it's falling apart as fast as they build it. Well, uh, yes, I can see elements of that. It's, it's certainly not, uh, it's not all in the bag, that's for sure. But I see it as an accelerating process, uh, and uh, it worries the heck out of me because uh, once the, the dam starts to break, and I, it looks to me like it's breaking up now, the pieces falling out start becoming larger, and they start falling faster. And so this great, this great uh, outpouring of water from behind the dam, when I, when I say that I'm thinking of our freedoms, our freedoms are, are, are being flooded out through a huge breach in the dam, and it seems to be going faster and faster. And uh, so I'm very concerned about that. We could come up with some event or series of events almost any day, which they could justify, they could use as justification for, you know, closing down on what's left of our freedoms. They're definitely planning to do that. It's just a question of when are they going to do it and what events are they going to use for that. But by the same token, as you say, they... It, it looks like their system is falling apart. There's certainly a lot of disagreement among them. There's a lot of uh, uh, infighting between them as to, to see who is going to have the ultimate power. And uh, But so I guess that's part of it. They've got to destroy a lot of stuff to build the new system where if they destroy everything, then only their central hubs are left. And so by extension, by... You know, by the rule of heavenly bodies or gravitational pull, it will pull everything uh, into it. Yeah, that's a perfect analogy, I think. And uh, also, we have to remember that uh, certain uh, subgroups within the collectivist movement uh, actually advocate uh, conflict within their own ranks. Adolf Hitler was one of those who was quite adamant on that. He said, it's good that we fight within our ranks because only the strongest of us will survive, and we need only strong people in our movement. So there's a lot of that going on, too. And I think that kind of actually pigeonholes them and trips them up a lot. Um, well, let's hope it does. Uh, the, the point is, I think, to all of this is that we certainly cannot sit back and just wait for it to crumble because they've got plans for us that we're not going to like. We have to fight this with everything we have. Well, let's talk about what the plans are versus our plans and also how, what, how you see the economic collapse engineered or not, what's happening with the global carbon tax, what life will be like under that. I mean, this is the actual Soviet Union is what I'd call it we're going into. But we'll get G. Edward Griffin's take on that in just a moment. Stay with us. The New World Order beast is genetically modifying your food, mixing vegetables with animals, and now experimenting with viruses. Without a long-term long food solution, you will have just two options. Starve, surrender, or surrender. surrender. All, canned food All canned food supplies will eventually run out. What then? Then. Grow your own healthy food and feed your family forever. SurvivalistSeeds.com is now the nation's largest bulk heirloom seed company. And it's owned by a real patriot, Big John Lipscomb. You can now, you can have, now have an infinite amount of healthy vegetables like a watermelon, a bundle of carrots, or tomatoes for a little more than a penny each. SurvivalistSeeds.com. And now you can go into business with Big John at SurvivalistSeeds.com by becoming an affiliate. See his link at SurvivalistSeeds.com.